Excuse me, is this the reading room? Yes, I'm Saad Mazur. And I'm Travis Howard. This is Reading Room Talk. Thank you for pressing play. Welcome. Yeah, welcome back, everyone. Oh, yeah, welcome back. We are back and behind the scenes again today with Stuart Bryant, tax administrator, but uh, radiology wonder man. Does everything. So thank you so much for being here. How are you? Uh, I'm doing pretty good. Thanks for having me. Uh, we appreciate you doing this with us. So sure. we know we know you've done a lot, but take us back to x-ray school. What was your toughest class in x-ray school, you would say? Oh, gosh. So, yeah, I um, I did my x-ray training in the military, in the Air Force. Um, mm, okay. <laughs> the, uh, for me, I think the toughest was, of course, physics. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, the formulas and um, it, just everything related to x-ray physics. So that, that took a little effort yeah. to, um, you know, get that down. But we did it. I can imagine. I can imagine. Were there like, was there like a tough, tough part of physics or just kind of like all of it? Uh, just kind of trying to remember all of the, uh, you know, factors like uh, different things like, OK, if my image is too dense, you know, how to reduce my KV and my mass to get what I need. Mm-hmm. So there's all those mm-hmm. formulas that you have to remember. Um, mm-hmm. So Yeah, no, that's uh, that makes sense. It's a uh, it's a lot. It's a lot. It is. Uh, did anyone sort of try? Were you intimidated before you started learning about it? Did everyone say it was going to be hard? Actually, I, I kind of fell into it because, uh, you know, in the military, you take the ASVAB and I qualify for certain things. And I picked x ray because my mother was a nurse. Okay. And I kind of I kind of knew that was medical. Mm-hmm. So that's why I chose it. And that's all I knew about. It. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> um, yeah, that, that's, that's, so I had no, uh, preconceived notion about the difficulty of the course or the work mm-hmm. or anything like that. But at least you knew what it was. I feel like a lot of people don't even know that it's a whole, it's its own thing, you know? So at least you had like, you know, someone in your family kind of tell you like, Hey, this is something that some people do. So right. that's important. Um, so tell us, tell us, take us back. So where are you from? Where's your family from? Where'd you grow up? Um, so I grew up, uh, about 90 miles south of. DC, uh, Richmond, Virginia. Richmond. Um, All right. So yeah, grew up there. Um, mm-hmm. Went to all three levels of school there. Mm-hmm. Um, I enlisted in the military uh, just out of high school, um, and kind of off I went. So, what nice. prompted you to do that? Enlist in the military? <laughs> well, um, <laughs> I. Uh, my senior year of high school was when I decided I might want to go to college, and that was a little, that was a little too late <laughs> to even you know think about applying and what my grades should have been and you know the whole thing. So, um, I, I mean, my brother was is a Marine, so I, I kind of knew oh, wow. there's opportunities there in the military. So <laughs> I, I knew I didn't want to be a Marine, so I you know I chose the Air Force. Very cool. Very yeah. cool. I know, and we kind of chuckle when, when you say, you know, it was kind of too late. But I think, you know, you're so young at that point in time, you may not have known what you wanted to do. Um, you chose your route, but, you know, for the, anybody who's like thinking they want to start and go to college, it's never too late. It's <laughs> never too late. Exactly. Yeah. It's never too late. Now, like, could you kind of, can you tell us why, like, you may have not been interested in, like, going to college, at, you know, like, throughout high school or like, was it you just kind of interested in different things or what was kind of your uh, path there? Um, I think it was just lack of knowledge, you know, mm-hmm. kind of like, you know, I'm in high school and, and I'm just doing high school things. And then it came up to the end of high school. It's like, wait a minute, you no, know, you, okay, you need to, need to make this next step. And I was just not prepared for it. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, no, it's and, not. yeah. So it happens to a lot of people. Yeah, no, that's that's normal. That happens to a lot of people. So it was good that you had like someone in your family was uh, in the military. Now, how much older is your um, yeah, he's your brother who was in the Marines? Well, he's three years older than me. Gotcha. Very cool. And he had kind of a positive experience, I'm assuming, or was it uh, different? Yeah, his, his experience is positive. Yeah. Very cool. Very cool. So, Very cool. And, uh, and then from the – so like when you – I guess you enrolled. So, what was the next step? Like, where did you go? Where was your training? Where did you, um, yeah, end up? Okay. So, uh, you know, of course, basic training was in Texas. Uh, 
the technical training for like the healthcare in the Air Force was at Shepherd Air Force Base in Wichita Falls, Texas. Uh, so we went there uh, and trained there. Um, in the Air Force, they had like uh, phases of training. So you did just your your book work okay. um, in that first phase. Um, the second phase, you were transitioned to say a major medical center. Um, I came to Malcolm Grove here at Andrews and did like the second phase of my training, which was like a year working classroom work, uh, clinical, you know, working with the radiologist. Mm -hmm. um, and then the third piece, you had to go to a base that had uh, a hospital and a radiologist to work for another year. So in total, the training was like maybe two and a half years. Okay. Um, yeah. So um, after that, uh, you know, the Air Force actually, in order to get my registry, my RT, the mm -hmm. Air Force had a quality control exam that you had to pass in order to even sit for the ART. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah. So they're, they're training. And, and, and what? And then ART just so for all clear. So what does that stand for? Oh, okay. The American Registry of Radiologic Technologists. Gotcha. It's the accrediting body for X-ray techs, uh, CT, and yeah, radiation, radiology. Yeah. 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 No, that makes sense. So. That's cool. So you so you passed and uh, did okay. It sounds like so. And did you stay in? The, and you said you stayed in the military after that, or did you kind of transition, you know, out at that point? So yeah, I, uh, I spent thirteen years in the military. Um, after that, I left and I actually served overseas in uh, Europe for four years, which was an experience. That's um, very cool. Now, no, no, it was, right? it was actually a really good experience. Um, because before that I had, I guess, as far as travel, I had traveled as far north as DC and as far south as North Carolina. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Before going to Europe. Yeah. Right. Oh, wow. So it's, it, yeah, it was an amazing experience. So nice. Um, nice. Now where, where in Europe did you go? Um, I was stationed in England. Okay. Um, and you know, while I was there, you know, we just had a chance to travel. So, I mean, it's like, uh, Germany, Switzerland, Belgium is, it was just, it was an amazing experience. So, you know, for, uh, a 19 year old who, <laughs> you know, had traveled as extensively as I had, it was an experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's awesome. That's really cool. Now, did you, um, now did you kind of continue doing the X-ray tech thing when you were in Europe, or like how did that work for you? Yeah, sure. So, um, yeah, I was still in X-ray tech, um, and that was like my basic, uh, my basic duty was X-ray. Okay. Um, so we were at a hospital. The base I was at was like one of the major bases, major bases in Europe. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So we had a, a, a large hospital facility that kind of um, supported the smaller bases in England. So, oh, wow. OK, OK, yeah, that's cool. How would you say your uh, military experience, um, how would you say that that affected you in the clinical setting of, of practice in medicine? Um. I think the, the discipline, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, everything was structured, um, policies and procedures, tech, you just, it was like, everything was very structured. Mm -hmm. Um, and I actually worked with some incredible people, even on the physician side and as far as, uh, on the enlisted side. Very cool. So, yeah. You got to yeah. shout them out for us. Who do you, who can you uh, tell us and who, how did they affect you? Oh gosh. Um, it's been so, so long. Um, I mean, I've had, I, I, I really, I've had radiologists that I've worked for that, you know, were very, you know, willing to teach. Um, mm -hmm. I, I guess I'm, I'm, a, I have to understand things. Yeah. And sometimes that's a curse, but, <laughs> <laughs> so I ask questions, you know, what's that and why does that look that way? And so everybody's always been, I've always found people that were just willing to 
you know, to share. That's amazing. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, and then I've had uh, enlisted, senior enlisted folks that I've served under that just, you know, pull you to the side. This is how you do this. This is how you do that. You know, so I've always, you know, I, I, I can't pick or remember serving on anyone that was just like awful to serve on. So, yeah, yeah, which is important. It's important. Yeah. So I always felt like the discipline of those that were in the military brought to to the medical practice. They were always strong. You know, they um, had no problem following protocols and making sure things were done the right way each and every time. And I think that's huge in medicine, whether you're, you know, the technologist or the physician, the nurse, anybody, you know, it's just you have to be comfortable with protocols and doing doing it by the book each time so you don't make mistakes. Um, exactly. So I, fig- I figured you would have had had that had that strength going into it for sure. And even down the road, as I'm sure you'll explain. Yeah, no, it makes sense. That's, that's awesome. So, so tell us, so like when you were like working there, like, uh, so x-ray, you can do a lot. So did you x-ray? Did you do like CT, MRI? Did you do like interventional when you were there? Like what were all the different um, modalities you did? So, uh, so in Europe, uh, this was, uh, the mid to late eighties. Okay. Um, so we didn't have the only modalities we had were x-ray, fluoro, and ultrasound. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, you know, uh, and, and we supported the smaller bases in Europe. So we, you know, have relationships with the, uh, the British government. So if we needed certain, if our soldiers needed certain care, they either went to a British hospital or were flown to um, Wiesbaden in Germany, which was like the major medical center um, in Germany, and they had CT and those other modalities. I see. I see. Oh, very cool. Very cool. So, so it sounds like you were there and then came back to the States. Now, where did you come back to when you came back to the States? Um, I came back to the Pentagon. Oh, wow. <laughs> yep, the Pentagon I, at the time had a, a Air Force clinic. Mm-hmm. And there was an army clinic in the Pentagon. Um, the army clinic was much larger, uh, but uh, the Air Force clinic, um, that was very interesting um, because the, we supported the office of the Secretary of Defense and the um, Joint Chiefs of Staff. So whenever mm-hmm. they traveled, our physicians, our flight surgeons traveled with them to provide care wherever they went in the world. Wow. So that was a that was a very interesting experience. Very cool. Well, that's really cool. That's really cool. And um, so from there, like you stayed a few years, or did you um, kind of transition into, uh, you know, your next step at that point? So um, after that, I, I transitioned to a, a Air National Guard unit on the D.C. Air National Guard. Um, mm-hmm. That was in the late, it was like early 90s. Okay. Okay. And and that that's when I finished up my service was in the the actual one thirteenth Air National Guard. Gotcha. Gotcha. So, yeah. Wow. Wow. That's uh. So you spent how many years total? Would you say like in the military? Um, thirteen. Thirteen. Okay. And then from that point, what was your next step? So at that point, when I transitioned to the Air National Guard, of course, I was considered not active duty, so a civilian. So I started working at uh, Southern Maryland Hospital in Clinton. Oh, okay. Um, okay. Very so, cool. you know, I worked there. Uh, I've kind of worked a couple of places uh, there, Howard University. I've worked for Kaiser before. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, just a couple of other odd, like uh, part-time jobs, like uh, patient, uh, patient first. Okay. Um, you know, so I've uh, also in that mix, I've uh, I worked for one of the vendors um, doing uh, systems training. So when they buy a new system, we go out and train them um, on the use of the system. Um, so that was very interesting because it gave me an opportunity to 
He saw from the industry standpoint too then. Right. So I saw different, the way different hospitals operated, mm -hmm. um, their setups. Uh, you know, so that was a really, that was a really interesting uh, position as well. So. Wow. So like, that's, that's interesting. Like you went to x-ray school and then you were basically able to like work in the military, work, you know, in hospitals, you were able to go into industry, like you were able to do a lot of things with this. So that's, yeah. that's really cool. Yeah, you saw a lot, I'm sure. And that, and that's kind of what I, you know, I'll tell people you, it's, I guess it's about having a vision. Um, mm -hmm. Some people say, oh, this is x-ray. I don't just want to shoot x-rays. And I'm like, eh, it's not just x-rays. You know, there's other modalities that you can get into, mm -hmm. like CT, ultrasound, uh, MRI. Mm -hmm. um, there's also with the industry, um, they have people, like when we get new equipment, their trainers come in and train our staff on the use of the, the proper use of the equipment. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, so there's just so, so many you know opportunities. And then now, you know, I'm working with the PAX team and I mean, the opportunities have just been endless. So. That's awesome. That's really cool. So tell us, so can you explain to like someone who's like not familiar? So what is PAX and what is it that you do with PAX now? Ah, okay. So, um, so for the person that doesn't know, I would say, you know, in radiology, when you go and have your x-ray done, they used to hold your x-ray up to the light and show you. Now everything's on the computer. So there's a whole infrastructure that supports um, your images being available on the computer for your doctor, or whoever else needs to, you know, uh, view those, those, those studies. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So what we do, our team supports that infrastructure um, that maintains those records for radiology. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so what, what, what did you have to do after being a technologist to to be able to do this? Um, so I guess I'll go back. Uh, initially, when I worked for Kaiser, um, before I left, one of the last things I did was some project work for Mid-Atlantic states. Um, when we transitioned from say the wet film processing to the digital component. It was CR at the time. Mm -hmm. um, I led that effort for radiology to transition the entire market to digital x-ray, which was CR. Yeah. Um, DR wasn't as mature then as it is now. Mm -hmm. um, so that was the route that we took at that time. Um, but during that time, I learned a tremendous amount working with the IT folks about networking and all of the connectivity that's involved. Uh, I went back to school and um, worked on um, some coursework with uh, like Microsoft and information systems. Um, and then my clinical experience is really valuable because With our support, you have kind of two groups. You have people that are kind of mostly IT, and then they kind of have to understand the clinical. Yeah. You have people like me who are clinical, and we transition to the information or the IT side. Um, so I think there was really a value in that for me because um, of the various things that I had done um, since, you know, um, in the field. Um, it, it helped me in that way. So <laughs> that makes sense. And you said you need to know everything, so you probably knew everything. <laughs> <laughs> and you had that vision too to to combine, you know, to know that you had you had a lane, you had a, a niche where you had the clinical aspect, and also you were acquiring that other knowledge, that IT knowledge. So yeah, uh, yeah, that's that's you, know, that, that you were able to put it together like that. That's awesome. And I was going to say, I mean, probably when you were training, like there was just like a film library, which was a room with just, you know, films in it. And now it's all online. It's all digital. And this is what you do now, which is awesome. Exactly. Exactly. Very cool. Very cool. So so let, let me ask you. So um, do you have any regrets, I guess, as far as your career goes? Like, is there anything that you feel like you would have wanted to do or looking forward to doing? Um. I would say professionally, no. Um, I, I mean, 
I, I would kind of say I've professionally I've kind of lived a charmed life because mm -hmm. I've you know I've been able to I've touched so many aspects of our industry. Mm -hmm. um, it's just most some people start out as techs and they retire as techs, and there's nothing wrong with that. But you know, that just the opportunity to, like I said, touch different parts of the industry from the vendor side. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, just uh, in different uh, environments, because I've worked everything from trauma, you know, to outpatient Military trauma. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so. Um, That's awesome. That's really good. I mean, I think, uh, yeah, sometimes you just don't know. Like when you're like in high school or elementary school, you don't know what you want to do. You kind of fall into, you know, x-ray school and yeah, the whole thing opens up for you. So that's, that's, it's great. It's great to see. And it's great to, for people to hear, too. Like, there's just a whole, whole industry, like, once you just get into it. Yeah. What, what do you love most about what you do? Um, so, so now it's, um, it's, uh, I think it's the challenge. Mm -hmm. um, because the team here um, that I work with is, they're super. We've got a, a wealth of experience. Um, we support, uh, I, I think most people may think we just support radiology, but we support eye care systems, the Sectra, we support dermatology, we support, um, the imaging for maternal fetal medicine. Mm -hmm. So, um, that's kind of outside of what I had done previously because when I worked at Howard as a PACS administrator, when I worked for University of Maryland, um, we were strictly radiology. Um, so it's been kind of a, a leap or a stretch to learn and understand how these other departments operate and you know how we can support um, their efforts and support their imaging um, so that, of course, everything's available as it should be for you know, patient care. Yeah. Oh, that's and, awesome. Yeah, you love a challenge. Yeah, it sounds like <laughs> you, and you, and you move in shape, and that's that's great. What what challenge have you have you faced that you know would you say is one of your most difficult challenges? And how did you how did you get through it? Um, you mean just professionally or? Yeah, you know, um, professionally. Or personally, yeah. I think it all, it's all related. It's tough to do anything professionally if your personal life isn't, you know, together as well. So it's, it's all important. Yeah, you're successful. And we want anybody who wants to be successful, they can glean from your, from your journey and the things that you've accomplished. By all means, drop some gems, dude. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Um, so uh, I guess, uh, of course, you know, there are different challenges. Everybody experiences them. Um, I'm trying to think of, I can't really think of anything that's uh, significant that just kind of jumps out that I would, um, I guess, speak to. Yeah. But it's just, um, you know, uh, it's, it's little things. Um, I guess I'll share a, a small story of how I ended up back with Kaiser. Um, my previous uh, position was with uh, University of Maryland mm -hmm. and, you know, University of Maryland, the medical system is acquiring different hospitals. So I was at uh, Charles Regional in La Plata. And um, when they made the transition for us to be absorbed by the University of Maryland, um, there were two PACS admins and the decision was made that to support that system, we would only need one. So when that happened, we interviewed and I started looking because I'm not gonna kind of, you know, wait until the shoe drops. And right. that's how I ended up back with Kaiser. Um, so it's, at the time it was uh, somewhat stressful because it was like, wait a minute, you know, I've been there three years and that was kind of supposed to be my retirement job. Oh, I see. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so, you know, and, and I think the mistake I made was I said it out loud. 
to myself. But, you know, um, and then, you know, life throws you a slider and, you know, you just have to make those adjustments. So uh, it's kind of interesting just the way it just kind of lined up because uh, when I submitted my resume, I think it was like, I think Kaiser closed the position like a day or two later. Wow. So I had just got my resume in <laughs> just in time. You know, yeah. so it just it's just interesting how everything just kind of lined up. But, you know, when they yeah. when they they told us that, I was like, ah, dang it. You got you missed it. <laughs> you know, so um, but yeah, it's but like I said, it's you know uh, that's life, and you know you kind of yeah, that's exactly you roll with it or you let it knock you down. So that's exactly right. That's life. I mean, you never know. There's no you know they say there's no real such thing as like job stability. You know, you just want to have like you want to have like your ability stability. You want to make sure that you're ready to go wherever the next step is going to be. So it sounds like you didn't burn the bridges you had at Kaiser, and obviously you were ready to like jump into the position, and it worked out great for you. So. You were, you were, you know, you weren't like lucky. You were just ready for the opportunity. So you were, I, yeah. I see you having foresight and I see you planning and I see you equipping yourself with the skills mm -hmm. that, that are going to be needed in industry and you're not afraid of a challenge. So um, I, I'm, I think with those things, it's, it's hard to not succeed. So absolutely, uh, absolutely. Met, met, you know, a lot of props to you for doing that. Absolutely. And um, so like, tell us, so like, let's say, like, let's say you're talking to someone or yourself that was in like, you know, high school and is trying to figure out what to do with their life. And, you know, maybe like, you know, maybe interested in being a tech or going into the military. Like, what would you tell them to kind of encourage them if they're struggling? Um, I, I can actually give you conversations that I've had. Um, and I usually talk to people. It's like, okay, look, Here's an idea for you. X-ray school. It's a two-year two year school. Mm -hmm. um, once you complete your training, there's exams that you have to, you know, complete and pass. Um, the beautiful thing is, is that you can take this skill anywhere in the country mm -hmm. and work. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because it's, it's basically about uh, standing up and supporting yourself. Yeah. You know, if there's other things you think you want to do, this is just like a stepping stone because mm -hmm. sometimes I'll get, oh, I don't want to be an extra tech all my life. I'm not telling you to do that. What I'm telling you is, is that you use this as a stepping stone. So mm -hmm. if, say, you want to move to California and do whatever, get into acting, you can support yourself because you can go work any shift that you want in order to kind of pursue what it is that you want to do. Oh, that's great. Man. Um, great. You know, talk, yes. Yep. So then I told him about the different opportunities and not just about x-ray. Mm -hmm. Here's some of the things that are going on. Here's some of the things that you can do. Here's some of the things that I've done. Yeah. Um, so that, that's usually my spiel with, you know, um, with young people when they kind of, mm, <laughs> you know. Yeah. No, that's true, man. That, 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 that's, that's great. And, and you're like a living, you know, breathing example of like all of it too. You know, you've, uh, you said you had like only kind of been, you know, between Virginia and North Carolina and then joined the military, went to Texas, went overseas. You have the skill. You can work anywhere. You decided to come back. And then from there, you use the skill to like, you know, who would have thought? You Now you're like, you know, helping support dermatology and, uh, you know, to up upload their images, which is crazy. So that's awesome. That's an awesome story. Yeah, it is for sure. Yeah. But again, we really appreciate you making the time to do this with us. I mean, it's a great story. And we hope that, you know, younger people who are interested in x-ray school don't just, uh, you know, see it as an endpoint. It's just a stepping stone, like you said. Yeah. Exactly. Many, many things you can do with it, too. Absolutely. Absolutely. And uh, yeah, it's awesome. And uh, we appreciate you doing this with us. And we appreciate everybody listening. And uh, till next time, stay low and keep fire. Please subscribe, rate, and review on iTunes or wherever you get your pods.
for me is a tech. Um, doing an x-ray, a lumbar spine, five views, I can actually talk a patient through it without touching them or touching them as little as possible. Yeah. Just mm -hmm. giving them instructions. Yeah. If they're, you know, if they're paying attention. 